Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm and welcome to another episode in the series of the Daddy Curbs Dream Barn Build. In the first episode, you got to see my son running the skid steer to dig out the hole to prepare for the foundation. In this episode, I'm going to show you how using simple tools, I came out and put stakes and strings to make sure that the hole was in the correct location and prepared for the professionals when they come out to do the concrete. At the end of this video, I'm going to introduce you to the professional that will be coming out to do the concrete and he's somebody you may already know. He is also a YouTuber and I'm excited to introduce him to you if you don't know him already and I'm excited to have him do this job. We've done a lot of good work moving soil around and getting a good start on this foundation hole. But now we need to try to mark our boundaries to make sure we have everything in the right place. I have a collection of stakes and paints and hammers and strings. You can see here this morning I already marked my fence line. I started the fence line with a string from one side to the other to make sure I was getting a nice straight line. And then I used the paint that you can spray upside down to mark where the string was. I'm not 100% certain that our foundation hole is exactly in the right place. It's pretty close because we did some rough measurements to get the, the area to dig. But now that it's mostly dug out, let's get some string set. My first stake, which just is a piece of old rebar is going to be put on the back corner basically eyeballing down the edge of the excavated hole and placing it on my fence line this might change but this is going to give me a good place to start Keep in mind as I do all of this and as I show you what I'm doing that I'm not an expert. I haven't built large structures. I did build the one horse barn we have, but even that was done with just small tools. I'm just showing you how I do it. Not really maybe how it should be done. I would like my barn squared up to the fence. So I'm going to use this barn square. Get my string a little lower to the ground here. I'm going to try to get this square on the string. And that way it will give me a nice 90 degree angle out. That 90 degree angle facing where my next corner should be down here. This will also give me a corner to go 40 feet down here because the barn is 40 feet wide. I'm going to go 40 feet on the fence line. The barn will be 10 to 12 feet off of the fence line. So that's, an, that's another line that I'll have to mark here. It looks like our square is pretty square to the line. Now we're going to take a string out this direction to find that next corner. I'm going to tie a loop in the end of this that I can slide down over this rebar. Just like that. We're going to walk this roll of string right out this direction. Now I can't really see the square down there that well, so I'm going to have to do it the best I can. Put another piece of rebar down here, go check the square, and then maybe come back and make adjustments. Now we're going to go down and check the square to see how close we are. It's pretty close. The rebar is easy to put in and take out and tie string to, so we're going to use that over and over. We're going to put a wooden stake right here on this corner now that we feel like our string is in pretty good alignment. Until I'm very certain, or pretty certain, that everything is where it should be. I'm going to put things in kind of shallow and temporary. When I feel really confident, I'll put things in more and I'll start marking it with paint. Back on the fence line where my corner is, we're going to go 40 feet from this corner 
to find the other corner. And there we have 40 feet on our tape right on this fence line. We're going to put our rebar back in here at the 40 foot mark. We're going to do the same thing down here using our square. Again, I'm kind of eyeballing down the line to look at my 90 degree angle, get pretty close, and then we'll make adjustments. Not too bad. Good, this is going along pretty nicely, I think. I have two corner posts on the fence line. Of course, these aren't the corner of the barn. It's just where the 40 feet wide uh, portion could be established. Those are running out along the outside edges of this foundation hole. Now we have to run some the other direction to figure out you know, how far off the fence line are we gonna go and then run 36 feet up because that's the depth of the barn to get that front line. I have one end of this tape attached to that corner post, that rebar, and it looks like 11, 11 to 12 feet. 12 feet is going to put me clearly inside the hole. 11 feet is going to run me right along the edge. So I'm going to go 36 plus 11 is 47. I'm going to run and see where 47 hits on the other end. Forty-seven feet, which is thirty-six feet of barn and eleven feet behind the barn to the fence line, puts me right along the front edge, well within the dug hole. That's pretty good. I'm going to put this wooden stake back in here, and that, that way I can have my piece of rebar back. Feeling pretty confident. I'm going to go ahead and cut this string. And tie it onto the stake. Now I can put my rebar at 47 feet. Down here at my corner post, I'm just going to use my square as a, a ruler. I'm going to come two feet off with a piece of rebar. That way when I put my corner post at the other end or the where I'm going to tie the string to, the strings can overlap but the stake won't be right on the string down there. I know some of that probably sounds confusing but when it's all done, I'll just show you a box. We'll put this over here. We'll go 47 feet from this mark. Down here on this end, we need 47 feet 24 inches off of that line. So let's use this to find our 24 inch or close. Doesn't have to be exactly precise, but close. So there's 47 feet and 24 inches off of that line. So our mark is right here. Now we gotta run 47 feet down that other side. We're gonna do it again, two feet offset on the outside of the string. And then we'll put a string on this front, the two marks that are at 47 feet. That'll give us our front line, the front line to the barn.
And just like that, we have one corner here where the pink and neon green intersect. And down there, there's, there's a neon green going that way and one going this way, and that's the other front corner. And you can tell that I'm pretty much right inside the box that was dug out. Nice work, Espen. And on this back side here, we come 11 feet off of here, put a stake, same thing down here, run a string, and that's going to be the back side of the barn, and we will have a complete four-sided box. All right, now I have a box. You can see four sides of this box. You can picture now where the barn's gonna sit. That's 40 by 36. And so what does that do for me? One, it helps me visualize where everything's gonna be, but because I wanna make sure this foundation is right, it gives me an idea of where I might need to shave some of those sides out. And now that you've sat through the entire video, thank you very much. We have our professional here. And maybe you guys know him, maybe you don't. Texas Barn Dominiums, Mr. Eric, Eric Cortina, Texas Barn Dominiums. He's gonna be doing this job. He's gonna help me out. Let me know what I've done right. Let me know what I've done wrong. And that way we can move forward with a good spot to put this barn. Right, yeah, well, foundation is very important. <laughs> you had some questions, what are they? Yes, sir, Mr. Eric, I know that uh, the hole that I've dug is gonna, is gonna be a good start. But one thing I'm not sure is how far outside the dimensions of the barn do I need to dig in order for the foundation to be solid? I would dig a minimum of five feet beyond in every direction because you, you don't want your footers to be on the very edge you have to understand you're digging out your bad soil and you're replacing it with good soil all right select fill okay and all that's going to be packed in well you don't want the edge of your foundation to be at the very edge of that new pad so you want to have some uh i guess in a way surplus area so that you can set your new pad on all right so i would go five feet in every direction extra so let's just say maybe on the back side I don't have five feet. Like I don't want to go five more feet. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be fair to cheat it just a little bit? Go as far as you can. Obviously okay. more is better, but uh, you definitely want to go at, as much as you can. Obviously you have constraints, but I would go at least two, three feet if you can. Okay. Like I said, anything, you just don't want your foundation to be on the very edge of right that, on the edge, that new right. pad. Yeah. So when we started digging this hole, I wasn't thinking about all of that. I was just thinking about the dimensions of the barn. That's why it ended up being pretty much 40 by 36. And now at this point, after the fact, I started thinking, you know, I probably don't want it right on the edge. And he just confirmed that. So let's walk around, take a look, and uh, we'll see if I can share a few other things with you. All right. All right, Eric, you want to share with me how to square up this foundation to make sure that I have the, uh, the 40 by 36 with 90 degree corners? So the easiest way, if you think about it, let me set my camera down. The easiest way to square up a foundation, you have to understand what you're doing, right? So you're doing a quadrilateral, right? A rectangle. You have two sets of parallel sides, all right? So the 40 foot sides, they're both parallel to each other, and the 36 sides are also perfectly parallel to each other, okay? So you pick your main side. That's the side that you cannot move. A lot of times you are trying to square up with a fence or you're trying to square up with a building. That's the one that cannot move, okay? That's your master, okay? So you you, you pull a string there. Uh, if you're pulling 40 feet, if you're doing a 40 foot side, just go what we call going wild. <laughs> go wild, go 50, okay? Go Try to go five feet on each side, okay? Now you pull off 36 feet off of that line and then you have another line that's also 50 feet long that's running perfectly parallel. So you pull 50, uh, uh, 36 feet on here, 36 feet on the other side to make sure they're perfectly 36 feet, 
you select what your corner is going to be and then you make a mark and then you do your math your a square plus b square equals c square you get your diagonal so this is what you're going to do you're going to go from here up to this side this is your diagonal you make a mark you pull this way you make a mark and then you pull back the other way okay and that's you you're literally going to draw an uh, hourglass start with two parallel lines and then you do your uh, a squared b a squared plus b squared equals c squared and then you you got it you're done and then you just have your four marks and then you can put stakes or whatever at that point just so you don't lose the marks when i started this video and this process i knew that my marks at this point didn't have to be 100 percent precise because the professionals are going to come out and do that but i just needed to be able to visualize this for myself and i wanted just uh the the practice of running some strings and seeing if i could get close so how close do you think you got you want to run a tape you got one i do you can run one right quick now when eric actually watches this video he's probably going to think i'm silly for how i did this but for me whether i did it right or not it was fun Eric's gonna run a tape and see how close I got. Really, I should have two long tapes, but I only have one, so let's see if we can make it work. All right, dimensions are 36 by 40, correct? 40 across the front and back, 36 on the sides. All right, well, let's pull from, let me pull, just hang on to that. You know what they call that, right? What's that? That end of the tape? No. They call it the dumb end. Ah. This is the smart end. Because I'm holding it, yeah, I get it. Well, the smart guy holds this one. <laughs> so hold that tape. Okay. You're gonna burn a foot. Burn a foot. Burn okay. a foot means you hold it on one foot mark. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm there. Right, so you're off by three inches. Okay. That's all right. Go to the other side. This side you're right on, so. Maybe, maybe your stakes move. I actually think this stake down here did move. Because it's stuck down in a part that's not very solid. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So, like I said earlier, if we do your, your hypotenuse, then you don't have to worry about measuring the other sides. Because you just have to make sure that you have two parallel sides, okay? All right, so our hypotenuse is 53 feet, 9 inches, and 3 quarter. So now we're just going to measure across that distance. And we're going to start at this line. And when I get to the other side, it should be on the other line. If it's not, well, then we just move it over. Okay? Great. So, we're almost done. Now, we already know we're going to be a little off because one side was three inches off. You're off by two inches. Two inches? I'll go the other way. Go down to this corner? All right, heading to the other corner. We're off by two inches on that one. Okay. All right. So, I mean, for uh, for digging purposes, you're you're fine. So basically, what he's saying is, at this point, I did all right. Obviously, my strings have been messed up a little bit because of just weather and oh yeah, and, probably and, animals walking over them. Yeah, but I mean, it's very, very close. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I would just, like I said, try to dig out a little more. All the way around just to make sure you have a nice pad okay and uh, get you some select fill pack it in and rock and roll <laughs> so now that mr. Eric has been here Texas barn dominiums he's gonna be helping us with this job he gave us some tips some clues things to look forward to extra work thanks Eric and uh, but I'm glad because that's gonna make this job so much better in the end and when they come out to do this foundation everything's going to be prepared and ready to go so eric let's turn the camera on you and you can share with my audience how to find you i'm uh, with texas barn dominiums just like the cap says uh just texas barn dominiums is my channel we do we build barn dominiums we pour concrete we we do it all so if you're interested in that kind of stuff go check us out texas barn dominiums 
And uh, that's all I got for today. We are Texas Barn Dominiums. That's my sign off, so I'm gonna let him do his now. Yeah. <laughs> Here on the Daddy Curbs Farm, I believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you so much for being a part of my story through this video and letting me be a part of yours. And I would love for you to check out Eric's story at Texas Barn Dominiums. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.